Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, September the 14th, 2013, and yes, the first day of autumn is getting ever so closer. Can you dig where I'm coming from, Daddy-O? I smell wood burning. That's a sign of autumn. Excuse me, people's wood burning stoves and fireplaces. I love that aroma. When I go to the the Polish or the German pork store, you get that aroma of hickory smoked, whatever, knockwurst or uh, pork shanks or whatever they're smoking. Slab bacon. Can't be beat, man. Can't be beat. Greetings, everyone. And welcome to our new, well, for this week, Progressive Discussions. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James P. Madonna, and I am coming to you live, and pre-recorded, of course, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center with, uh, in Northeastern New Jersey. I'm here with my Blackthorn shillelagh, imported from Ireland, weapons grade for the uh, noggins, for the skulls of Republicans and teabaggers and uh, I want you to say hi because um, uh, the next holiday coming up for those who, that enjoy it and celebrate it is Halloweeny. Mm -hmm. Here's Bones, Dr. Bones McCoy. I called him Billy Bones last year. Well, but his I, name wasn't Billy. Uh, you know, as is in Billy Bones' treasure. But I call him Dr. Captain Kidd. I call him Dr. Bones McCoy. If you could see him on the on the camera, he's just suspended above me for good luck. And he keeps uh, Mr. Anonymous uh, uh, V for Vendetta company. So I want one of those hats. Plus he has a nice oh the Zorro hat. Yeah. Plus he has a nice. Um, they have them at the. At the party box. The one that I, I Vendetta, think they do. The one that Vendetta wears. Yeah, it's like a Zorro. Very square. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let Anywho. me formally pipe aboard my co host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored uh, in 1977. <coughs> pipe him aboard our progressive liberal starship. Yes, we are going all natural. The flags are waving. It is a very cool, actually autumn weather, the first real autumn weather that we've experienced. No more heat waves, I don't think. I hope not. Furnace came on this morning, 54 degrees. Oh, it was cold. Unfortunately, the, um, the elderly woman <coughs> that lives upstairs from me uh, was taken away in an ambulance at around 5, 5.30 a.m. they woke me up. I heard all kinds of heavy footsteps going back and forth and I go, wait a minute, it's two things are happening. She, She's getting, the ambulance is coming or there's intruders in her place, there's burglars. I didn't know what, what was happening. Then I saw her daughter standing on the sidewalk looking down the main street and I go, well, she's waiting for something to arrive. And I bet it's an ambulance, and sure enough, I, I hope she's all right. Mm. Back to the piping. <whistles> Arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal, liberal pirate ship, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I got piping here on my shirt. My me authentic bosun's whistle Light pipe. How you doing? You all right? Now it's time for my weekly monologue and um, inductees into the Chiselers. Sure. Let me finish. Inductee into the Chiselers Hall of Shame, and there's usually more than one. Yeah. In the Devil's World, I would imagine. There's plenty of them. Especially since the Republicans more or less control Washington. I mean, 
almost, almost totally, almost. It could be worse. Let's see. What am I going to start with first? Um, I read a a very short but accurate uh, statement recently. Politics is no longer left versus right. It's become a truth versus propaganda. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, what about the money part, though? Well, Any the mention of that? The money in politics? Yeah, money, the lobbying, the, you know, the, all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's just well, that's, that's it's just not truth and propaganda. No, that's corruption. I mean, sometimes you got yeah. both of the <clears throat> parties uh, uh, issuing propaganda because mm -hmm. their palms were greased. Yeah, you know? and that's, that's why... We, we have to get the, as long as the money is in politics, yeah. the corruption will be in politics. Correct. And the two-party system will simply be two sides of the same coin. Kern. Or yeah. Kern, Kern, as Kern. Uh, Ed Norton used to say on yeah. the honeymoons. Okay, next little clever tidbit. tidbit. Mm -hmm. Congress, as in the present-day Republican-controlled Congress, Congress cuts $20 billion from food stamps, ah! but increases corporate welfare by $11 billion. Interesting, where their priorities are. It's okay for the rich to get welfare. Well, as we say all the time, it's always, it, it, you can always find money for war, but you can't find money for food and education. Yeah, and, and, and shelter. Basic ne basic human needs and human rights of people that are not financially independent, more or less, you know. That's 99% that's of Americans. There you go. <laughs> okay. Basically. Speaking of in the 90s percentile, 90% of the media is controlled by... General Electric, News Corp, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS. The big six. Yeah. Control 90% of the U.S. media. Yeah, I believe back in the 80s there were, <clears throat> I don't know, 50, 60, whatever. Maybe more than that. Now it's consolidated exactly. into what well, that's what I we mean when we say fat cats. Um, I notice uh, on online um, on the internet, less and less people seem to be interested in very important issues like the ones we discuss, because the most frivolous, idiotic videos are, are increasingly get uh, getting astronomical amounts of hits, where the truly educational videos like ours are getting progressively less unless there is a theme in the title that hits a raw nerve with mainstream well that's why the bad boys <coughs> and girls get away with what they get away with because there's nobody watching them Americans are not they're interested in partying and twerking <laughs> and pleasure and having fun than they are in their society and the the government and the way the country is operated, the co the condition of the country, they uh, they feel that nothing can be done, when in reality a lot can be done. You just don't vote for the two party system. But what do we got? What are we going to have this November in in the New Jersey ballot? Are, we, are there any alternatives to the Democrats? Like Cory Booker, does he? Is there anybody else on the ballot? There were when uh, when the uh, primary. There were. In fact, there was one guy um, that was a um, what the hell was he? he was a, a, a regular business guy or whatever. Yeah. Oh, gee, you know, I don't know how he got on the ballot, but he was there. Because I mean, Cory Booker, brother Booker. He he's very charismatic. He's a slick talker. Very slick talker. He seems to be highly intelligent, but... Yeah, but in the last 10 days, uh, a couple of days ago, there were 10 murders in Newark. The people of uh, Newark are 
in protest or uh, they're 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 they don't know what to do anymore. They they they're begging for somebody to come in and help and do something about it. The the, the crime rate has has gone up in Newark, and uh, Cory Booker closed many public schools after he had a meeting, after he had a powwow with Chris Christie. With the voucher crap. So, right. So that means Cory Booker is a corporatist Democrat. Unfor yeah. Unfortunately, and that's why I'm saying about options. Uh, okay, here we go. Next. After spending $100 million on vacations, Michelle Obama has the nerve to say being first lady is prison-like. <laughs> $100 dollars on vacations. Uh, I, I, it sounds like it sounds like a, a life filled with vacations for the first lady. Are you sure that was not a right wing? No, they they do spend a lot of money on their vacations, but I, but it does it sounds like something that Republican congressmen and senators would do is spend is put their vacations on the taxpayers' tab, which happens to be the middle class and not the rich. Well, Michelle Bachman and two jerks uh, with her were over in Egypt, and she was telling about how great America is. Yeah, and How she, exceptional. Oh, well, if you're America rich, is. if you're rich and you don't pay taxes, it's exceptional. Michelle Bachman also said something about we got to we have to pray to God that Hillary doesn't win an election or something. Uh, God is not interested. God is a political. God Since, is not a respecter of persons. Uh, Michelle Bubblehead Read Bachman. Read your Bible, Michelle. Michelle Bubbleheaded Bachman. What makes you think God is a conservative? <laughs> oh, that's a new thing going around. They haven't read the Bible, obviously, right? That's for sure. God is apolitical. Right. Okay. He does not like human government at right. all. There will be no human government in the millennium and beyond. The world, to the world tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. The world tomorrow. Now, this, this statement comes from the Teamsters Union. Hey, hey. Uh, all right, brothers. Did they ever find ha, uh, 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 what, what, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy Hoffa? Jimmy Hoffa? Jimmy Hoffa? No. <laughs> in, okay. In right-to-work states, uh -huh. wages decreased $5,333 per year. Health benefits decreased 21%. Workplace fatalities increased 51% yeah. and the poverty rate increased 12.5%. Because right to work laws benefit the company, period. So just say no to right to work. Even though, even though right to work kind of has like a positive ring to it, but it's well, not. Well, that's what it was all about. Remember George Bush, clear skies amendment. Men pollute. The clear skies allow more arsenic in the food, allow more pollution in the air. And there's arsenic found in many foods today. Even they even found arsenic, I guess, in American-grown rice, uh, apple juice. Remember the article yeah. on apple juice? Yeah. It's all part of. Because they up the limits. It's all part the of safe the limits. deregulation, right? Yeah. So is fracking part of deregulation? You know, it's profit above the planet, profit ab before you know, the environment, and people. If people understood and read their Bibles, they would know that before humans were created and etc., yeah. the one-third of the angels right. were on the earth here, and they were to beautify it, and they had dominion over it, etc. And they, guess what they did? What? They polluted it too. Yeah. Well, didn't didn't they also corrupt the uh, the very well meant writings of uh, Karl Marx, which was about fairness? What the hell does that have to do with the angels? No, it has to do with. Uh, uh, We're talking about that's the economy. Enti yeah. Entities that have free freedom of choice, angels and humans. Yeah. So have, what do they have to do with Marx? It has to do with 
taking a a well intended plan uh -huh. and corrupting it and ruining Who it. Who said that capitalism was a well intended plan? Oh no, I'm not defending capitalism. I'm well, saying that Marx's system originally was very fair, and they and they corrupted it. Meaning, well, no, people. It, it had nothing. Totalitarianism has nothing to do with Marx. But didn't Marx talk about? Oh, okay, I see. When what people you mean. think about uh, uh, communism, socialism, Marxism, they think of totalitarianism. They think of Stalin, Lenin, etc. Nikita Khrushchev. It's really not related. It's not related at all. No, but they just believe the propaganda. All right, next. We got we got two more. Ooh. I'm leaving the best for last. The most irritating for last. Sixty two percent of all bankrupt. Uh, oh, sorry. 62% of all bankruptcies in the United States are the result of medical bills. Correct. Isn't that sad? Well, that's what your private, uh, you know, the contracting system has done in America. We pay, we pay the most for health insurance, and we have the least benefits from it of all the industrialized countries in the world. Who, by the way are like single payers and they pay all the bills. We don't. Um, um, good, adequate health care is a right. Should be a right and not a privilege and no human being, no child, whether they're poor or no not, left behind. should be denied health care when they get sick. And, and no one should have to pay out of pocket when they're sick to see a doctor. That, that's all part of the, uh, the greed of conservatism. Well, you see that um, Obamacare might have some things that need to be corrected, but instead of looking at that and, 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 and discussing that, they vote to totally destroy it, to defund it. Yeah. It's a law, my friends in, co in, in the House of Representatives. It's a law. You know what I mean? You know what? You, you know have what, to repeal it as a law. You know what some of the teabaggers and libertarians are saying? They're trying to say in Obama and Obamacare and the involvement with Syria is uh, is part of the, uh, the the plan of the beast, the Antichrist. The, they're trying the beast to, is not here yet. How can yeah. it be a plan of his? They're saying Obama is too palsy wowsy with Israel. Or trying to be, you know. Uh, um, well, you know, Eph Ephraim and Manasseh have been uh, our brothers of Judah, so why wouldn't they be palsy wowsy? Yeah. You know. Yeah. True. They're both modern day descendants of ancient Israel. Well, sen sending billions of dollars to that country, to Israel, or to any country that is not necessarily an ally of the United States, like they send all that money to Pakistan. And, uh, because Saudi the United States buys its lovers. And, and, and Saudi Arabia during 9-11 was not uh, technically our buddies either because most of the terrorists were Saudis, right? Yeah, most are all. 15 out of 19 or something yeah. of that nature. But yeah. again, you know, the 9-1-1 issue is not solved, okay? It is not certainly the, the uh, official line, okay? The, the, the building imploded. That's correct. Like, a, like it was professionally... Done. Demolished, yeah. That's correct. It didn't lean any which way when it came down. Besides, the planes could never have gotten the fire up enough to melt steel. At the, at the bottom of the, at the foundation of the building. Anywhere below those yeah. floors where the plane went in. Okay, here we go. The last and most irritating mm. before we sink our teeth into our readings for this week's progressive discussions. I apologize for the chitter-chatter outside. There are some, I hear nothing. There are some very rude people. 
I hear nothing. Out there. This is the price you pay for the all natural uh, background. Okay, here we go. It's very short, but it makes me furious. Rand Paul oh, geez. said, Water is not a right. Giving water to others is servitude. First of all, since when, since when do Republicans play God or speak for God? Uh, living creatures have been drinking water for free on the planet Earth for hundreds of million years. Mankind has been drinking water and other animals for free for hundreds of thousands of years. And all of a sudden, the, uh, the greedy... Ayn Rand Lava. style uh, uh, um, Republicans, when the Republicans changed for the worse, all of a sudden they play God and they, they decide that water is not a right. Wouldn't you think that Nestle might be involved there with a little greasing of the Rand Paul hand? I think Perhaps. Rand Paul just like these other conservative politicians and corporatist politicians are whores with a suit and tie. Uh -huh. And I think that scumbag CEO, which I, I loathe all CEOs, I loathe, I loathe them, is involved in that. Yeah, right, water's not a right. So, so all of a sudden, rich politicians that are corporatists <coughs> have decided that uh, the most basic component of life from hundreds of millions of years is not a right. Pff, give me a break. Well, that's the beginning of the propaganda, and pretty soon, you know, it'll be, uh, uh, well, you know, we can do anything we want yeah. in the water because you people aren't going to fight us because uh, you, 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 you don't do anything anyway. You don't do anything anyway. Okay. Now, speaking of loathing, hating CEOs, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, something popular, which is the WWE and the, and the McMahon family. Vincent Kennedy McMahon and his daughter Stephanie. Uh, when did you know, Dr. Bill, when Linda McMahon was running for... Linda Lunchbox McMahon. Linda Lunchbox McMahon was running for, uh, was it Senator of Connecticut or Congresswoman? I forget. Uh, not Congress. All right, Probably senator. senator, something like that. Okay, some big office. She she spent one hundred million dollars ah. of their their own money, uh, and when they did this, the uh, WWE wrestling stars had to all of a sudden uh, fly coach with interconnected flights, even New York to Miami. They had a fly coach, interconnected flights. They had to carpool it instead of taking many flights. They had to, they had to pack a rent a car loaded with wrestling stars. They had to share a cheap Motel 6 type of a flea bag, inexpensive hotel motel with several other co workers. And um, the. Um, the low end and medium range wrestlers got paid very cheaply and they, they they have to they have to pay for their own health insurance and uh it still carries on today even though like linda mcmahon is not running for office but they have to provide their own health insurance which which means um if their injury is not completely healed it comes out of their pocket and 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 what happens is whatever money is left and they have to pay for their own transportation by the way and their own hotel accommodations the WWE does not pay for those uh, so rent the cars hotel uh, uh, health insurance it all comes out of the wrestlers pocket and the poor wrestler who is not a a build as a as a top primary top name uh, superstar has to pay out of pocket it doesn't have much money left to show for it because uh, 
I guess the McMahons used the Linda McMahon campaigning as an excuse. Now they have to recoup the money. And they got to recoup it, but you know what? It's kind of like the, the CEO blaming the stockholders for the things that he does. The downsizing and the outsourcing and the cutting and the layoffs. Hey, he still gets paid. Who? The CEO, so he don't care. In other words, he doesn't care. The in other CEO words, it's a, it's, a, it's a selfish, sinful human attitude. I have mine. I'm, I have mine. You don't have yours. I don't care if you don't have any. He does not have to perform to get what he gets. That's the point. He can drive the company into the ditch. Right. He still will get his moolah and his bonuses, just like on Wall Street, and, and, when we bailed right. them out. Huh? And the gold. They got 140 billion paid out in bonuses. And you know what Mr. Hank Paulson said? What? Well, we had to do that, or they wouldn't have cooperated. You know what cooperation I would have shown them? In the jailhouse. That's the cooperation I would have shown them. So what they are about is totally is exploitation of the blood, sweat, and tears of their employers, just like po politicians exploit the little guy in America, you know, by, by making the little guy pay the taxes and having the rich not pay any of the taxes. Mm -hmm. Quiet! All right, now. Now. It is time. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their party. You'll have to speak up a bit until this damn dog decides to, to dummy up or lower his bark. Somebody must be out there. Yeah, they're hanging out there talking, so the dog, you know, wants to be a part of it, I guess. Uh, let us sink our teeth into these readings. About one in ten men in some parts of Asia admitted raping a woman who was not their partner. According to the first large studies of rape and sexual violence. So they rape, I think they rape because of power, not not necessarily because of sex, sexual pleasure. That's it's, right. it's power. But they, they have pleasure from the, when the woman is not participating. And you have, and she's fighting you. So, but they get away with it, that's why they do it, because they can. Yeah, what about those five guys or something that uh, raped that woman on the bus in India or whatever the hell it was? Yeah, yeah I, I know yeah. about that. Five. I think it was five. Yeah, when yeah. their wife or girlfriend was included, the figure rose to about 25%. So they raped their wife and their girlfriend also. Gee, ni a nice guy, huh? International researchers said their startling findings should change perceptions about how common violence against women is and prompt major campaigns to prevent it. A previous report from the World Health Organization found one-third of women worldwide say they have been victims of sexual violence. It's clear but far more widespread in the general population than we thought. You know what? As much as I like race, this, this no, not rape. As much as I like the natural sunlight and the fresh air and the flags waving. Shut the door and put the fan on. These people, are, people are really fucking stupid. You know what I mean? They have no important agendas in life, so they don't want to see people that do have important agendas. Well, hey, they might have an important agenda, like... Yeah, like hanging out drugs. and bullshitting. Well, then... And party. 
for that. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't respect their agenda. Put the second from the left. Thank you. I don't respect their agenda, right? Well, neither do I. I just mentioned that, yeah. that, that as a, a being ironic. Okay. Well, it, it'll muffle the pooch, but it How won't. Much? It won't entirely. Um, Face him out, but New Jersey recently reached a sad historic record. Yeah, the highest rate of people under the poverty line in half a century. Wow, the news is sad, but hardly surprising. The crisis hit the state very hard. And we haven't had any strong economic policy or direction over the last four years. You're right. Governor Christie has a lot of qualities. His ability to communicate. Oh boy. His handling of the Sandy notwithstanding. But he is obviously not an economic genius. Oh, he has so many qualities. Who is this idiot that wrote this? Mr. O'Brien. Show him me, God. Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien. He's a conservative suck-up. His stubborn support for budgetary austerity and pseudo-trickle-down economics has been a disaster for New Jersey. He expected conservative trickle-down economics to work? Oh. They still, yes, they still expect that. <laughs> uh. We will not find any growth if lower income workers cannot get a decent wage. That means raising the minimum wage, restoring the earned income tax credit to its 2008 level and Investing in schools and infrastructure. Well, you have to first get get a full time job in order to get a, a, a living wage. Try to do that. Yeah, but if the companies are not paying living wages, then what are you going to do? You left up. You'll end up going on strike with the fast food chain. Means nothing. Strikes mean nothing today. They will just hire scabs. And you'll be out on your ass. And you won't even have your seven twenty-five dollar an hour job. And scabs it's all and for scabs their will and scabs will actually take the job. That's correct. That's correct. You know what companies uh, do when they hire scabs? Sometimes they, they pay them more than what the union workers are getting. Yeah, for the time being. Right, and then they cut your pay. <laughs> Sometime in the future. Well, it's hey, all for the companies. The for companies, the companies, the companies. A retail company, uh, Forever Twenty One, cut the uh, the pay and the benefits of their employees, and they re they reduce full timers to part time. Mm -hmm. No unions, no regulations. Investing in infrastructure and education has led to a resurgence in Maryland where the unemployment employment rate has been nearly three points lower than ours. All the economic indicators show that we are going the wrong way. It's time for the governor to stop being dogmatic on economic issues. Well, they, hey. all, they all sound like broken records, Republicans. Well, he's stronger than the storm, and he's stronger than the blaze now. Nah, they just repeat the things that Reagan said. Well, it worked then, didn't it? The bullshit? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse so me, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing my, my, my toasted bagel with cream cheese, if you're wondering what I'm doing here. Uh, government officials for nearly three years access data on thousands of domestic phone numbers they shouldn't have and then misrepresented their actions to a secret spy court to hmm. reauthorize the government surveillance program 
documents released on Tuesday show. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Snowden. Thank you, Bradley Manning. Oh, you are whistleblowers? Oh, you are akin to terrorists. We shall take care of you. You telling our secrets. Not good. Whistleblowing is a word. Is quite often a, a heroic. Uh, That's uh, correct. Uh, act. Time honored. Yeah, you're 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 like a you're like a really good detective. You're a, it's an expose of uh, of corruption or evil. A Columbo. You are a Columbo. And you do and you do that for only eleven thousand dollars a year too. Because that's uh, all Columbo made. That's all the job. When Columbo was on the air, paid the the real life counterparts of Lieutenant Columbo. That's all they made. Yeah. Eleven thousand a year. Where where is the incentive to break the case? Because Columbo the had character. No, seriously. Beside character, where is the incentive to even care about solving the homicide if you're getting eleven thousand dollars a year? Because it came to the character, not the moolah. See? <clears throat> the Obama administration had earlier conceded that its surveillance program scooped up more domestic phone calls and emails than authorized. But until this Tuesday, the depths of the program's abuse were unknown. According to the documents released by the administration, a spy court judge in 2009 was so fed up with the government's overreaching that he threatened to shutter the surveillance program designed to fight terrorism. Judge Reggie Walton said in March 2009 that he had lost confidence in officials ability to legally operate the surveillance program. The NSA told the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that month that from a technical standpoint there was no single person who had a complete technical understanding of how the program's computer system worked. Uh -huh. Judge Walton issued his blistering opinion after discovering government officials had been accessing domestic phone records for nearly three years without reasonable, articulate suspicion that they were connected to terrorism. For instance, he noted that only 1,935 phone numbers out of 17,835 on a list investigators were working with in early 2009 met that standard. Judge Walton said the government's explanation that analysts believed his order applied only to archived phone records strained credibility, excuse me, credulity and he ordered the National Security Agency to conduct an end-to-end -end review of its processes and policies while also ordering closer monitoring of its activities. Walton also noted that sometimes a US phone number would be reassigned by phone companies and in such cases, the NSA would scrutinize the records of an innocent customer. Walton called such cases a source of concern. Thank you, Edward Snowden. <clears throat> Speaking of this NSA security, I read an article where instead of having a uh, people having a password 
involving their uh, their smartphones, they're going to have a touchscreen uh, thumbprint. Yeah, I see that. Login. Yeah. Which is almost as almost as good, but not quite as the reading of the iris of your eye. All of that stuff is crap. And DNA is you can't you can't cheat DNA. That's number one. We don't even know that. Of course, you can. You can't cheat. We don't DNA. even know that. We could. They could. How? I don't know. I'm just saying. Take, if you take. Do not accept the official position, ever. DNA is. Uh, and until it is proven, without a doubt, period. You see what happened right here with the NSA crap that I just read. Yeah. Accepting the, the official position, you would have known, known, known nothing about it, this crap. You know? <sighs> Never accept officialdom. Officialdom always owes something to someone. Money and politics. So its information is always skewed. Scientists have turned back the hands of time in cells within a living creature. Sounds good. Researchers in Spain used a technique created seven years ago to force mature cells in mice to revert to an original form of stem cell with the potential to change into any type of living tissue. Now this is interesting for post-polio syndrome people and etc. And, and others that desperately need stem cell research, the paralyzed, you know, the uh, and other people with the neuromuscular disorders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Previously scientists were only uh, been able to achieve this change in a petri dish. The newest experiment, outlined on Wednesday in the journal Nature, may one day let doctors work entirely inside the body to regenerate tissue and perhaps more complex organs. That could include reconnecting a severed spinal cord or generating healthy heart cells. What about nerve cells? Could you, could you regen? You think you'd be able to? Uh, well, if you can connect the spinal cord. If you could. Didn't Doctor Bones? Didn't Bones do that in in, in Star Trek? Did you do that? When Bonesy? he was connecting uh, Spock's brain. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he he says yes, he did that. Well, you know, if you can grow an organ based on uh, the patient's uh, DNA and you can reconnect the spinal cord then uh, who knows what could be accomplished uh, perhaps limb uh -huh. growth regrowing somebody's like people limb. like Michelle Bachman and your tea party nuts and etc would call that playing God and they will not allow it so helping paralyzed and crippled people is not godly to them. Is You're it? expecting That's compassion from people. Ayn Rand, no compassion, no such thing as altruism. Isn't compassion and empathy part of Christianity? So is charity and giving bread to the poor and etc. Right. But <laughs> if they don't read their Bibles and they are phonies and hypocrites and only use God as a front man, what would you expect from you know, them? You know what amazes me is how these uh, these infamous uh, political celebrities like a Michelle Bachman or a Sarah Palin or, or any of them or any of the Fox people, how they could publicly make ridiculous, asinine, flat-out stupid statements publicly and, and do it with a, with a serious face and get away with it and get supporters uh, yeah and just not not feeling any remorse for making such an idiotic statement that mm -hmm. they make all the time not feeling any remorse for doing it I would be embarrassed as hell to sound like an idiot to the whole world that's why they never learn 
because to be able to learn or unlearn something you must come to the conclusion that you were wrong and they never do that Sean Hannity is never wrong Rush Limbaugh is never wrong what about O'Reilly and Bill O'Reilly is never wrong because because they say so and Fox Fox says so um, some uh, flamer troll whatever you want to call it he left uh, us a message over on YouTube he, did, he didn't have any proven facts to back him up he just called us names <sighs> What about the content? There what was about no, the content he, of did, the show? He, he did not respond to any of its content. Well, then that is a not ad hominem attack, and they are worthless. Some guy named Kyle Cap, some stupid name like that, Kyle Cap. What Kapp. was he making, uh, you know, uh, uh, disparaging remarks about? When, was when? he insulting my, uh, my, uh... No, no, he was insulting... The things that we, the issues that we discuss, and and, and uh, you know the the fact that these corrupt conservative corporatists are the root of the problem, or uh, our problems here in, in America, and uh, and how how they lie. We, you know, just the, the truthful expose that we do every week. He just called us names, more or less, and um, it's he, terrible. Now yeah. there is a person that God would call incorrigible. He didn't come back with any, any, any uh, evidence to support his view, but he didn't come out with a view. There you go. It was just like uh, what you would say: uh, uh, how many grits attacks? At how many? At how many attack? Yeah. At how many? Yeah. At how many attacks? Yeah. Hold on. Next time you get an ad hominem attack, you must ask the person, please. Do you eat grits? Refer to the content, please. Do you have a problem with the content? Levity bells. You have a Can problem you with add it? to the content? Contribute something. Yeah. Add yeah. to the content. Respond to the content. Yeah. Content. content. Don't just content. call us names like a, like a, like a, a schoolyard kid. You know, actually contribute something. Yeah. But does Fox News ever contribute any hard, uh, uh, proven scientific facts to back them up? Well, let's say they got the... These were supposed to be scandals. Benghazi, IRS, uh, Fast and Furious, etc., etc. You hear about them anymore? Where'd the scandals go, Mr. ISIS? Mm -hmm. Well, if they were scandals, wouldn't they still be around? Wouldn't somebody be, you know, paying the price or whatever? So obviously they were made up. Yeah, well, only when a Democrat is accused of something scandalous do, yeah. they, do, they, do they go on and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. And you know those teabaggers still call the media the liberal media? The lamestream media. Well, it is lamestream media. I mean, it's, it's, you just said it before. It's owned by six corporations. They couldn't, they, when people run for election, if, if they were judged based on their merit and their track record, um, Anthony Weiner would not have to uh, concede in the election and, and, and lose the primary because he, he made one hell of a productive congressman, United States congressman representing New York and, and I thought he did a fantastic job but based on Carlos Danger. Carlos Danger based on uh, his little fetish, his private life. What do they expect? For, they actually believe that the politicians that get elected are all lily white and pure. Did you see the other day McCain was playing a, 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 a game on his iPhone? He got bored. Yeah, at an important uh, meeting of uh, about Syria or whatever, and he's over there playing on his stinking iPhone. Now he was probably thinking of the uh, the the next recess, the next next big break, the next vacation spot he's going to uh, <laughs> arrive at on with on the taxpayer's dole. Yeah, this is the next step along a continuum. What this is hinting at is that maybe we can by regressing tissues in the patient, regenerate this embryonic potential 
and with direction regenerate a particular tissue. The reverted mouse cells were also found to be more primitive than stem cells taken from embryos or created in the lab. This means they can be turned into a placenta and other embryonic support membranes a factor beyond the capacity of the other cells. The latest finding modifies a technique that won Shinya Yama, Yamanaka, Yamanaka Nobel Prize for medicine. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, people. Something just blew out of my hand. Something, yeah, what you were reading. <laughs> blew out of Dr. Bill's hand. So I gave him a hand. Uh, excuse me. I gave him a hand. Uh, the cells uh, that regressed in the dosed mice were in the stomach, intestines, kidneys, and pancreas. You don't need the milu of the petri dish. You can just do this right in the tissue. That is surprising. In Wednesday's report, some of the mice had tumors that developed in embryonic support structures as well as yolk sac, suggesting they were more primitive and powerful than other stem cells. These embryo-like structures are a reflection of going back to a more primitive state. That's honestly what blew me away about the paper. It is not clear why the cells developed in live mice are more powerful than those developed in petri dishes. Hmm. Uh, what, what, that was scientists at where? It's researchers in Spain. Now. The question is, why is that research not going on in the United States of America? And, and we definitely have a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, state-of-the-art equipment to conduct such research. How come it is not being sponsored wholeheartedly and going on 24 7 which i would i would have stem cell research going on 24 7. i can assure you that the religious nuts are behind it the lack of innovation the lack of being the first they you know, are behind I, it i also believe that um, medical science in the united states is focused on one thing, drugs, and that is uh, patenting new drugs for market for for newly created diseases and syndromes, quote unquote, all these disorders, quote unquote, that are somehow created for every imaginable emotion and, and negative thought that people have. And all these disorders, they want to patent drugs. And with their astronomical markup, mm. profit from it through the ex exploitation of suffering ill Americans, ill people, sick people, and it's all for profit. And something positive, like spending money on stem cell research or uh, uh, natural uh, gerontology, you know, studying the antioxidant, the ORAC scores of every imaginable no many things, food many things many things and nu nutritional research um, but the nutritional research is skewed for the company who's paying well, they don't it. want they don't want you to maintain optimal health correct because when oh, you oh god of course not when, when you maintain optimal health you don't see the doctor and you do not buy drugs at the pharmacy you pay you pay the health store instead of the dog. Yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of health and nutrition, raw, not toasted, but they have, I read an article, raw cocoa powder 
blows away even acai berry in Orac. Far beyond the acai berry, far beyond anything else. What does it taste like? I don't know. Uh. But I imagine, well, you're not drinking it for pleasure. You're drinking it, you're drinking it. See, look, if, if it... But people won't do that. They it, will have to sugarize it. Or they would have to take capsules of raw cocoa extract perhaps mm -hmm. standardized extract if, if if it's not palatable the capsule's the way to go but that's that's some surprising thing we we love we love we love cocoa who does it i love cocoa okay now it is time for our break it is it is time for the reverend dr william j eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch and uh, unfortunately I was going to open the door up again because it got quiet, but the dog started resuming its barking. So last week you had to deal with my hay fever attacks. Oh this, my God! This week you got to deal with the the dog that won't shut up. There's always something. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and then we'll be back with our uh, voiceover artist William H. Morrill the third. It's always something, Bill. Try to speak up, though, Jimmy. I can barely hear you, okay? Oh, boy. Well, that doesn't do it. Yeah, I know. What, what, what could we do? I mean, that, that, that's the nature of the beast when you put somebody on a speakerphone. Uh, you know, I'll try. I'll try to speak yeah, up. Just speak louder, that's all. Yeah. And what can you do? I know. What can you do? Everybody's going to think I'm screaming at somebody. Uh, okay. Call your streamer. No, I don't want, no, I don't want to do that because it's, you know, I want to... I want it to sound good. Uh, you know, we had a, uh, I ha we had the door open, and this dog would not shut up. So I had to close the door. You know, it's like this this dog in the neighborhood wouldn't shut up. So I had the door open for fresh air, and the breeze was blowing the flags in the background, and we had the sunlight coming in, and the dog wouldn't shut up. So I had to shut the door. You know, I mean. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of perils and things that happen. I, uh, uh, can you hear me at all? Because I can barely hear you. Oh all. Jesus! You really can't hear me. We hear Very you fast. fine. We hear we it's hear you. We hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, wow. absolutely. I don't know, man. That uh, uh, you got your you got your the people are gonna think we're losing our minds here. But you got your phone volume on max. Oh, everything. My phone works fine. It's only when we do this. It's, it's, uh, you can barely hear, but I, it's the best I could do. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, my my throat is bothering me as it is. I don't want to strain it. All right, listen. Let me let me let me introduce you, because people don't know what who the hell you know what's going on here. Because I was in the bathroom. Okay, we're back. Naturally, we're back. <laughs> you see the video, <laughs> uh, and we have with us. Yes, you heard his voice. The one and only, our uh, voiceover artist is here with us, William H. Morrow III. How are you doing, sir? All right, guys. Good out how's everyone? Uh, okay. Could be better. You know, you know the, uh, I think the ragweed season is here. Um, wh where is your location now, William? I'm still in Jersey. I haven't left in weeks. Oh, uh, okay. All right. right. Uh, I know uh, you have something special to say about our newsletter. Yeah, that the best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensor.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're living in end times, so you need Newsletter Censor. That's right, William. That is very right. Founded in 1977, the very best way to be a part of and join our organization. Get it now. NewsletterCensored.com. This is the backbone of our organization. Now, uh, William, uh, you and I were discussing uh, some good subjects uh, that, you know, of course, we always discuss important, deep subjects. And we were talking about uh, in incompetent management, uh, cronyism, nepotism, and office politics. Mm -hmm. And I know you. Worldwide. I know you have some yeah, things that we've all experienced at some point or other. So uh, it's not good. I think it holds back businesses. Businesses are doing well. I think what they could do, they didn't have this occurring. Jealousy, envy. Uh, as we as we talked yesterday, there's uh, some I guess you'd say managerial people or whatever 
powerful and hire somebody that's extremely qualified because of, they're so good, they're, they're afraid this person might show them up and take their job. So it's almost damned if you do and damned if you don't. You're overqualified, you're underqualified. Uh, how do you become medium qualified? You know, it's, it's odd. They, they want somebody so bad, but they don't want somebody that's so good. Yeah, it's frustrating. want to pay. They don't want to pay the older experienced employee. They want the kid fresh out of school, the entry level. That Then again, they don't even want entry level because you don't have enough experience. You, you have, the old kid's catch 22. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. You're entry level with no experience. We can't use you. You're, you're overqualified. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You might take my job, this or that. I mean, you know, it's really hiring is a crapshoot. You've got to get lucky. You need a break when you're getting hired, and hiring is, I think, personally, the stories I've heard, the nightmares I've heard, it's it's harder because it's impersonal now in town. Yeah. No longer do they call you to come in for an interview or see you, whatever. You're another page on the computer monitor. You just blend in with everybody else's the e resume or what have you. Yeah, if you're, and, if you're... Just take the human element out of it, which I don't think is good. If it was my business... Uh, if I still had Super Tech going, no way. I'd want the old one. I want to see you. I want to look you in the eye. I want to talk to you. A uh, computer monitor does not tell me what your personality is like. It tells me absolutely nothing. It tells me what you're putting on that, that screen. And that could be a, a pack of lies as well. And even in the old days, the old ways, when people sent written resumes, they were always exaggerated and lied on too. Yeah. Even easier, I think, nowadays. Well, employers don't employers don't read lengthy resumes. They they if you can't put everything on one page, there's so many applicants that they have to uh, go through and weed out that they, they just don't go beyond reading one page, and uh, they they only want your past ten years uh, of experience. But then again, if you have if your resume is too good, you're a threat to the to the person interviewing you. Again, it goes back to when we first started today, Catch-22. Yeah, damned not... Damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, what do you do? Not like I said, it's a crapshoot. You, you, there's a lot of luck involved here. You hope you'll get chosen or they'll call you in for an interview or something. But you just don't know. The, the old, Like I said, the old days, the old ways were better. Yeah, and they they're... called you up, they had you in, you sat down, you looked somebody in the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember the, the saying, and it's so true. You only have one chance to make a first impression. I can make a first impression on a computer screen. True. In the old days, you used to get up, remember, you get up early, get dressed, shower, shave, make, make sure your hair look good, wear a suit. You go in and see somebody. You walk through that door, first impression. How do you make a first impression on a computer monitor? And you can't. You're just another electronic yeah. page. That's all you are. It's almost like being in a big university compared to a small university or college. You're in a uh, big auditorium where you're one of three to five hundred people, or you're in a smaller school where you might be like high school, 24 people, 30 people, give or take. You know, where the professor does know your name. Well, and plus what I don't like is that you, you have to go through the, uh, you know, the, the interview is is even uh, uh, um, the requirements in the interview is, is even nitpicky with jobs that are not necessarily high end upper level jobs even even low paying jobs these companies are nitpicky because they know how many people are out of work they know about the the true unemployment rate and uh, uh, it's frustrating you know the job doesn't pay a lot and and, and they and they want like. The, the perfect ultimate employee, for God's sakes. Well, it also, you have to wonder how good these employees in personnel, well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have say personnel anymore, it's human resources, oh, new term, how good these people are at really choosing and selecting to. Are they that qualified to do that well? They're selecting good employees, somebody that might really be a benefit, a real boon yeah. to the corporation. You wonder. You know, are they just going through the motions of their job to get a paycheck? 
And, and what? Are you just one of their two. They're just employees. Mm -hmm. How dedicated are they? Yeah. And what about getting hired, getting promoted, and getting raises based on merit instead of uh, being a victim of nepotism and cronyism like you were years and years ago, uh, William? Well, I told you about that yesterday when we were having coffee. Uh, I won't name the corporation, but this is back in the 70s. I was hired, did my job very, very well, not to brag, but I'm being honest. Uh, one day they, they came in and said, we have to let you go. I said, why? They said, you're making too many mistakes. I said, I haven't made one single mistake here at all. I said, let me see the list of my mistakes. They showed me the list. I looked at the list. I said, this is all so-and-so. Well, I can say his name because nobody knows what his name is. This is all Willis's mistakes. I, I fixed all these for him. My manager looked me in the eye and says, Willis has been here longer, son, I'm sorry. And he was also my manager's son-in-law. I do I fight that. No, Somebody it's... Somebody blamed me for all of his errors, and I fixed all of his errors to make him look better, and they showed me the list. Even my manager said, I know, son. I know, son. I said, these are all his. I know, son. All of them. The, the kicker uh, was you're the new guy. You had to take the you had to so take the I hit. Take out first, the new guy. The new guy gets uh, the hit. Now how do you how do you fight that, James? You can't fight it. It's 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 it's. it's what, I mean, what, what was my argument? I, mean, I said okay, all right. You know, right. nepotism and then cronyism yeah. with politics, political jobs, and incompetent people. And kiss you know what is. Kiss ass, kiss ass, yeah, and, and you're... A lot of them, they get there by doing it, then when they get there, they can't do the job appropriately or well enough at all. They're more, I know my father with his corporation and train a number of guys to be the CEO, and he used to come home very upset some night say, this guy is going to destroy the corporation. <laughs> but he got there, the guy that got there, just but and then said, this guy just can't cut it. I remember Dad's exact words, this guy can't cut it Confidence, confidence and job performance, it shouldn't have to always be about the balance sheet and the, uh, the, the bottom line result, you know, uh, uh, or worried about your stockholders getting upset. Well, Jimmy, we, we spoke about that about a week or two ago, remember, where Jack Welch and myself included was, Jack, I don't care what the stockholders do. Remember? You know what we're doing? Don't buy the stock. And Jack Welch said, well, you said the same thing for me. I'm not here to please the stockholders. I'm here to run a corporation. You can't. People Jack looking Welch at the daily stock sheet, whether it goes up, that's so emotional anyway. You could be the greatest yeah. organization yeah. on the planet. It could still go down days. They'll go up some yeah. days. Good. Nobody knows what that's going to do. That, that gentleman you can't you run your organization that way by looking at the stock Jack Welch. Yes, Jack Welch. Jack, Jack, you're, you're a fool if you do. Yeah. Uh, Jack Welsh was the first uh, oh, connected with General Electric to start outsourcing American jobs, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, they all did their things or whatever. And I, I, I remember years ago, too, uh, uh, Apple Computer did. And within a month or two, they stopped. They said the, the, the quality of, of work output was horrendous. They brought it back to this country. So you yeah. got to watch it's like a bid or anything else. You give it to the cheapest bidder, you'll probably get the cheapest quality. Correct. Maybe not always. There may be exceptions. I thought, I'm not sure if there are, but you know, the odds are you'll get the cheaper quality. If the cheapest well, the, there's, there's no better. You pay for is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. There's no better way to assure devotion, dedication, and, and quality of, mm -hmm. of uh, performance. Then money. Uh, money, money, money helps. Money destroys. M money can do what you let it do. You know, another example is look at uh, what's the Mets' new stadium, City Field. City Field. That thing has been cracking since before it was finished. Now I wonder if they went to the cheapest bidder. Apparently they used cheap concrete or whatever, but it, it's cracking all over the place. From what I'm told. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who knows what the other stadiums or whatever are doing, wow. whatever office buildings are doing, blah, 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 yeah. wherever you go. I mean, uh, you can't.
end up cutting your nose off to spite your face, short, no, short term. No, but sadly, but a lot do, you know. A lot do, and they end up saying it, and what's your old excuse? And then when they go to court with somebody who's killed and the building collapsed through this or that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, I didn't think, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. You're responsible, I'm sure you were told, you do have advisors, you didn't, even, you didn't think down the road what could possibly happen. I mean, an inferior material, what's going to happen possibly? You always think about this. Go yeah. for the best. Right. Go for the best. Well, there's an, more, get the best. there's an old saying. It's it's called uh, penny wise and pound foolish. That's it. Well, that, that applies. That applies very, very well. You know? You know, I mean, you got to think. Saving, like, these guys are saved, save a few dollars here and there, blah, blah, blah. Then they get up soon. It costs them millions. Where did your foolish decision get you? Right. It cost you more in the court than what you actually thought would happen. Oh, well, I didn't think. I didn't realize. Well, why did they make you CEO then? <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, paper, paper shufflers. You, you got to think long term. You have to. You always should think long term. You always should do worst case scenarios. And ask what if. Always. Three, four, five basic questions. That's what you should have a little checklist right there. What if? Like what we, if we go with this? The material's bad. What if, you know? How long will this last? Blah blah blah. You know? Well, they give us a guarantee that if it fails. Yeah. I did that with Super Tech nah, when I was building that. I remember telling all the contractors a bit. I said I want a written guarantee. Anything ever goes wrong with this building because I cannot afford settling with recording studios. How's the the whole yeah. model here of building this size? I want in writing on contract. Anything ever goes wrong, you repair impeccably to my demands at your expense. And not one party. They all agree. We will. Definitely. Yeah, we were. Um... They said we will. And I want nothing going wrong with this building. And I will have it. I cannot afford settling anything. It's got to be impeccable. So, there yeah. are ways to go around it. It's called a contract. <laughs> Repair your expense if you're that secure in your company or your uh, contracting company that you can build it that well. What are you afraid of? Sign it. Give the card. Give the uh, the statement. So, yeah, we were. Look at these buildings that collapse and kill people. I mean, you saved a few dollars. Great. Only three people died. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You saved some money and people lost their lives. Isn't that just grand? Happens all the time. See, so there are so many good ways to do things, so many bad ways to do things. Sadly, the human being chooses the stupid way of doing things at times. Well, not at times, many, many times, to be honest with you. Uh, well, right to, right to work states are, are horrible. They're notorious for uh, wages going down and the poverty going up and health care benefits going down. Uh, you either told me or somebody this past week and I didn't realize 25% of our state in Jersey are li living below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. Yes. We just read 25%, Jane. Yes, you're right. My response to that person that told me this week was, my God, I would have think 3 to 5% would be horrendous. And you're telling me one-fourth of the state is living below the poverty level. True. That's horrible. The rich got their uh, tax cut. Free state. Exchange your times to eat. Stronger than Blaze. Today, or you eat lunch, I'll eat dinner. They better watch what the, they buy to eat. The human beings can go through this and make choices. Well, you know, it, it should also be about doing the right thing. I mean, uh, uh, Germany you did the right thing, Jimmy. I didn't mean to interrupt. How did you do the right thing? You, you're getting, you're putting it heads everywhere you turn. I mean, Ger Germany has proved that you can you can produce a tremendous amount of electricity 
with their uh, solar, their new solar tower <coughs> invention that uh, they ha that they have in Spain, in, uh, in southern Spain, and and it's a uh, uh, it's a solar panels and it's also a tower con converting the heat off the off the ground to electricity. Like anything else, but let's be honest now. They worry about gas miles from cars. Now, ever since the fifties, maybe even early, I don't know. I know in the 50s and 60s, they've had carburetors that got 60 to 100 plus miles per gallon. Why aren't you bringing those out? Bringing those out? They I took the bugs... Alternative electric crap, which I just don't like. They, they took the bugs out of the electric vehicle decades ago. They, I mean, we, we, we don't... Oh, yeah, and I don't like that. I like a car to be a car and run on gas. I like the sound of the vehicle. Yeah, now, I know, yeah, but it's, if, if you had, it's not practical. If you had a carburetor getting 60 some odd miles to the gallon, you wouldn't care if it's three, four, five dollars a gallon. You know, uh, that, that they've had them. I had that happen to with my former secretary's neighbor. I personally don't like the fumes. The, the, I don't like well, the carbon the, monoxide. It's an air cleaner with the filters now and everything, but it's just the feel on the side. I do not like an electric car myself. I do not like it. I don't buy it. You know, it, you can't go far or very long. Well, uh, you, you could really. I just don't care for those at all. The, the, like a car to be a car. the batteries, the batteries, long distance batteries, are they do exist, and um, you know it's uh, uh, believe me, all, all the negative things you heard about the electric car, they they taken the bugs out of them. Um, well, they have, but the public isn't buying into it. Uh, uh, electric car sales are not taking off at all. Because they're expensive. Like a car to be a car. They, they cost a fortune. The, elect what? the electric cars cost a fortune today. Why? That's, that's a good question. Why? You know, why should they? You know, I mean, uh, why should it cost a fortune? Why? Well, then, then you talk batteries, then talk products, talk everything else. Go to the hospital. Why does an MRI cost so much? This and that. It doesn't cost that much. To actually, perform an MRI or what have you. They're looking to make as quickly as possible their investment in buying an MRI. Hey. They what? Pay that thing off, so that's what you're charged an arm and a leg. Why? Why? Why does a, an, a diamond engagement ring cost five thousand dollars when South Africa has has tons of diamonds they're holding back? <laughs> Remember, we talked about that weeks ago too. My former yeah. attorney told me there were diamonds actual value is nothing. So it's just a a price created by man, and it's created in demand. Racket. It's really, actual value is nothing. It's a, it's a game. It's a racket. It's a, it's a scam. Whatever you, whatever word you want to use. I know. You know. Let's hope things can change, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's hope. Uh, Let's they're keep trying. The, if you believe in Bible prophecy, they will get worse. So, uh, but well, any, but let's anyway. Hope, uh, let's hope for the sake of everybody yeah, and everything. Let's hope we turn things around somehow. <laughs> we shall see what happens, everybody. But my time is up for the day. Yes. And both of you, good to hear from you both, Dr. Bill, James. Good, good. Yes, yes. Thank you. Well, thank thank good luck with your, your little dog outside. <laughs> the little the, the little dog, the little good dog dummied up, knock on wood. All right, there you go. So maybe so we'll have a good rest of your show. I will talk to you all next week. Yes. Bye-bye, right, sir. You take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah, I was going to I was going to bring up one subject, but he he kept on going on and on, and I just totally forgot where I was going to. Uh, something we had discussed over over the, the, during the weekdays, because I have meetings with William Morrow uh, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, in this case, I had nothing to do yesterday, so it was three days Friday. <sighs> but I, uh, you know, if you don't if you don't bring up a subject when it's fresh in your mind, and the other person is uh, yakking. Yeah, well, I did tell him the best thing is to prepare yourself with the material you want to discuss for the week, and you got about 20 minutes to do so. So, uh -huh, knock, uh -huh, uh -huh. knock yourself out. But, uh -huh, uh -huh. but I like when you, what you brought up about uh, Welsh, Jack Welsh. Jack yes. Welsh. You know, I don't want him the to just father of outsourcing, General Electric. You know, I don't want him to say. CEO. I don't want him to say anything positive about Jack Welsh. That's Meanwhile, correct. he started. You said he started the outsourcing. That's correct. The father of outsourcing. 
shut the fan down too. Well, yeah, but I don't know if it, we're on the air. But I don't know if the um, the pooch is gonna start barking again. But who knows? Only the shadow knows. Only the shadow knows for sure. That's correct. All right. Back to our readings. Hardly a week passes without large financial institutions making the news. For Goldman Sachs, Citibank, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Barclays, or HSBC, the storyline is all too familiar. Repeatedly paying settlements into hundreds of millions of dollars without admitting any wrongdoings. Ah, oh, really? Global banks are more powerful than kings and princes of <laughs> excuse me, errors past. Instead of employing armies for their conquests, they only need batteries of lawyers to fight governments and clients worldwide. These behemoths also successfully court lawmakers who will help them in stopping or watering down sensible regulations that could interfere with their obsessions to grow at any price. Martha Stewart mm -hmm. spent five months behind bars for insider trading. A lousy $40,000. To avoid personal losses of $58,000. Gee, well, I wonder why no one from Goldman Sachs uh, ever saw jail time. <laughs> Contrast this to the worldwide economic disaster of 2008 where culprits created trillions of dollars in damages. During the near financial collapse, there was a televised congressional hearing. Although the four top executives being grilled uttered that they were sorry, their body language indicated otherwise. There was no sincere remorse. Yeah, when somebody is sincerely sorry, they, they're looking at you with their sad puppy dog eyes. They're, they're not shifty eye looking in different directions. Instead of handing out prison terms or multi-million dollar fines, government could opt for a more effective deterrent. Place transgressors for a few hours at a pillory right next to the Wall Street Bull. And let the people have some fun. Well, you know the Wall Street bull there by Merrill Lynch. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I think uh, America should follow the uh, the example that Iceland set for the world and what how they handled. Tell their, the bankers to go to hell. They handled the way they handled their corruption. Look, let's face something. The Federal Reserve and the setup system with the 12 banks and etc. This is privatization. The United States Constitution says that the United States itself can coin its money and produce it anytime it wants to. It does not have to go to some private pseudo governmental organization like the Federal Reserve and borrow the money and pay interest. Okay? We don't have to pay interest to ourselves when we make our own money. So all of that is crap. And we don't need those banks. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can have other types of banks. And what about North Dakota with their, their community bank? Huh? What's going on there? Well, the, the state owns the bank. Not this. No, you can't. You cannot privatize absolutely everything. It's been proven to be a fiasco. Not for the people who get the money when you sell it to them. People on top. Yeah. Like a pyramid scheme. The people on top make the big bucks. That's what at, privatization at, is all about. At the expense of everybody at the bottom of the pyramid. Didn't work out too well in Iraq. No. 
supplying the troops, privatization? No, not at all. Speaking of New Jersey again, along the Hackensack River, from Little Ferry to Lyndhurst, call it the summer of the peregrine. Peregrine falcon? Not only have these dynamic falcons nested in at least two locales along the river, but so many have been so often in so many other places that it is hard to believe they were extinct east of the Mississippi a half a century ago. Wow. Well, they, 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 to help the birds, they've uh, put artificial uh, birdhouses on top of New York City skyscrapers to help many of these uh, raptors, and particularly the peregrine falcon. Three of the upteen Bergen County sightings involved young peregrines with identification bands on their legs. Thanks to digital cameras with high-powered lenses, birders were able to read the numbers and letters on the bands and find out where the birds came from. In mid-July, a young banded peregrine was photographed on a radio antenna in Karlstadt. It had been banded as a nestling on the Bayonne Bridge on May 29th. The, uh, the American bald eagle is making a great comeback too. In early August, a young banded peregrine was photographed atop an office building on Polito Avenue in Lyndhurst. Yeah, I think I know where that section is. It had been banded as a nestling atop an office building in Reading, Pennsylvania. Really? On Mike? May 31st. Same one? Now it's in New Jersey. Well, we have plenty of squirrels uh, for them and uh, wild rabbits. In late August, a young banded peregrine was photographed on an electrical transmission tower in Decorte Park in Lyndhurst. It had been banded as a nestling on an Atlantic City water tower in June. What should we make of all these peregrinating young peregrines? Migrate. Obviously, they're they're migrating to different regions to nest for a reason. I think I think it's food related. An expert, Kathy Clark, supervisory a zoologist with the State Division of Fish and Wildlife, oversees peregrine banding for the state, which included monitoring twenty six nesting pairs last year. I think they're doing well. Our peregrine populations. But the drama has been slow to build up. In the last couple of years they seem to have taken hold in cities. Leading to these post-fledgling concentrations with juveniles hanging out and probably learning from each other. There are definitely nesting peregrines we don't know about, evidenced by more birds that are not banded. And those tend to be in cities where there are a lot of potential nesting sites that are hard to detect. Birds are taking advantage of ledges, wherever they exist, like old buildings, and nearly old bridges. Why are we seeing so many peregrines, young and adult, banded and unbanded along the Hackensack River this summer? Why? The convergence is probably related to the concentrations of the prey species, like shorebirds and other flocking birds, and perhaps a lot of nesting peregrines associated with the Hackensack Passaic 
and Hudson rivers and bridges. What about all the, 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 the flying cockroaches known as pigeons? We got plenty of pigeons, too many. Pigeons and squirrels. I, I, I said it before. Food. That, that's the, uh, the main objective of a wild animal is to follow the food. Uh, seabirds. I, did, I saw a documentary on how seabirds follow um, um, predatory fish, dolphins, orcas. Um, they follow them because they know that those predatory mammals and fish follow uh, and search for the food, the, the, bait, the small bait fish, like, you know, a migrating herring or sardine. And they know that there's going to be bits and pieces of, of smaller fish floating at the surface. And that's how the, the birds, uh, um, strategy, you know, that's how the, that's the strategy that these wild birds, uh, that are, uh, carnivores, that's, that's what they use. It's, it's, uh, you know, the, when somebody uses the term bird brain, it's not oh. accurate. Birds are actually smart. You know, I mean, to me, that's intelligence when you're, when you're following a, um, a, uh, um, what do they call it, a pod of dolphin? A, a, a group of dolphin is not a school. I think they call it a pod. You know, when you just follow the pod of dolphins and you know the dolphins are going to find food and therefore you will find food also. What happens come autumn? Do they migrate? And where? Resightings and recaptures of peregrines suggest <coughs> that the first year birds do migrate south. They get recaptured at Hawk banding stations in Cape May and Cape Charles in Virginia. The migration pathway is generally along the Atlantic coast for eastern birds. The more northern nesting peregrines from nests in the Canadian Arctic and Canadian Maritimes tend to migrate farther south to South America. Whereas mid-Atlantic young peregrines probably migrate only to the southeastern United States. Adults tend to remain in their nesting areas year-round. Really? Well, they're finding they're finding food source. I mean, I think. Well, I think when it comes to urban areas, I think the pigeons are all year round birds. There's no hibernation of pigeons, but the squirrels definitely hibernate. Wild rabbits hibernate, but not the pigeons, I believe. So um, they do prey on on those. Um, and of course, many of these seabirds, uh, like uh, these uh, eagles and hawks, osprey, you know, that live uh, near the coast, I mean, they could see fish with their fantastic eyesight uh -huh. as they fly above. And, 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 and birds are, they're amazing, like uh, uh, buzzards, you know, uh, vultures, they, they look for um, pockets and currents of air. They just glide for hours without flapping their wings. They just glide and they look for weakness uh, in a flock of, uh, in a herd of animals, a herd of wild animals. They look for signs of weakness or uh, an animal might be old, injured, just like the wolves do. Actually, they follow wolf packs too, the buzzards, because there's going to be a leftover a kill laying on the ground. So the birds have a system. And this yeah. remarkable rebound is one of the great success stories. Imagine no nesting peregrines, zero, in the eastern United States in the early 1960s. And now we can see them just about anywhere in New Jersey, including and maybe especially our cities. My only caution comes from the inconsistency in successful nesting in their historic cliff habitat. 
but they are doing so well in urban areas that I have to hope they will other overcome other difficulties. Okay? Yeah. Well, you know, conservation is a wonderful thing. Seeing, seeing an endangered uh, or, or even a threatened species making a big comeback is, is a very positive thing to witness. Uh, <coughs> it's just a shame that so many uh, of the Earth's creatures have become totally extinct due to man. <gasps> because, due, due to greed, actually. Where's Over the dodo boy? Where's the mm -hmm. unicorn now? Forget about the unicorn. Where is behemoth? Let's, Where is leviathan? Let's stick to the dodo or the uh, Tasmanian tiger. You know, the, for whatever reason, uh, these uh, God, these members of uh, God's creatures were made extinct by the greed of man. Guess what movie is now coming out again? I think it's the fifth in, in installment of it. They're making another movie of Pirates of the Caribbean, Jurassic Park. Oh no! Yeah. Only it's not going to be called Jurassic Park. It's called Jurassic something else. Let me guess. They 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 failed to destroy maybe one or two eggs that are left. Oh, maybe they'll use the mammoth thing. Putting the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know. Or the into um, the elephant. Or the uh, the. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex DNA going into the fertilized chicken egg, oh. which, which supposedly was supposed to happen or did happen already, and they're not telling the public the outcome, because they find they found uh, T Rex DNA in Montana. Would our government do such a thing? And mammoth, they found a uh, well-preserved mammoth DNA, you know, blood and. Um, bone and flesh and all that I mean they could easily uh, they said they can easily put it into a uh, female uh, in Indian I mean Asian elephant the ones with the smaller ears to try to bring back the woolly mammoth the Food and Drug Administration FDA has issued a positive review of a breast cancer drug from Roche that could soon become the first pharmaceutical option approved for treating early stage disease before surgery. In documents posted online, FDA scientists said women who received the drug Pergetta, P-E-R-J-E-T-A, Perjeta as initial treatment for breast cancer were more likely to be cancer free at the time of surgery than women who received other or older drug combinations. Yeah, and also natural alternative therapy to all cancers can also uh, stop and reverse the cancer also but of course they're not going to mention that no. no although the results come from mid-stage trials of the drugs FDA recommended accelerating approval of the drug oh sure make make the big box before thoroughly uh, testing it that step is reserved for groundbreaking drugs to treat life-threatening diseases. Pergeta was first approved last summer to treat women with a subtype of breast cancer that has already spread to other parts of the body. But Roche's Genentech unit is seeking approval to use the drug at a much earlier stage of the disease after diagnosis and before surgery to remove the tumor. Surgery to remove tumors is the first step in treating virtually all forms of cancer. If approved, Pergeta 
would be the first cancer drug approved for use as a pre-surgical step. Using cancer drugs before surgery is still experimental. But doctors hope the approach could help shrink tumors to make them easier to remove. In some breast cancer cases, a tumor that is easier to operate on could allow women to keep their breasts rather than having them surgically removed. On Thursday, the FDA will ask an outside panel of cancer specialists whether Progetta's benefits outweigh its risks for treating early stage breast cancer. Among other questions, the experts will be asked whether the preliminary results reported by Genentech are likely to result in longer overall survival for patients. The government agency isn't required to follow the group's advice, though. It often does. The panel will review 417 women study comparing Progetta in different combinations against older breast cancer treatments. When Progetta was combined with Herceptin, another Genentech drug and standard chemotherapy, 39% of women saw their cancer reach undetectable levels. Only 21% of women experienced the same results from taking Herceptin, the chemotherapy alone. After drug treatment, all the women receive standard breast surgery to remove any cancerous tumors. Genentech says this surgery allowed researchers to confirm the presence or absence of cancer. Last year, the FDA released guidelines for studying breast cancer drugs in the pre-surgical setting with the aim of accelerating approval of promising therapies. Progetta is the first drug to undergo FDA review since those recommendations were released. If approved, it could encourage more drug makers to study cancer drugs for early stage I just want to tell you people out there that are viewing this show, me personally, I refuse to promote any pharmaceutical, so, I mean, um, Dr. Bill read it because it happens to be current, a current event topic connected with cancer, initially breast cancer. But this is orthodoxy. This is a drug which I do personally do not advocate um, unless it's you have no choice and you have advanced cancer and you know you need a little head start. But uh, I don't. Uh, I can care less uh, about the success of any pharmaceutical or pharmaceutical company for that matter. Uh, like Herceptin. Progetta only works in a subset of about 20% of breast cancer patients who have tumors that overproduce a protein known as HER-2, which makes cancer cells rapidly divide and grow. Breast cancer is the second most deadly form of cancer in the United States women and is expected to kill more than 39,000 Americans this year. Yeah. Well, one of the worst would be pancreatic cancer. Uh, um. Oh no, that's not, uh, that's not, uh, those figures, they're not, uh, pancreatic cancer is not 39,000, it's less than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, now melanoma, uh, I, I guess there's probably lung cancer is bigger than breast cancer. Yeah, because it's people that still smoke. But like, let's say malignant melanoma, 
you would ha I assume you would have to have an advanced condition of melanoma for it to be a, a death sentence. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, other skin cancer like uh, uh, carcinoma, a uh, basal cell carcinoma is much more treatable. But anyway, uh, we got anything uh, on the lovely Republican Congress or, or Balloon Boy or indirectly Bar Barbara Bono? Huh? Yeah. Indirectly. Okay. There's a feeling in the air that the economy is slowly turning around. The feeling? Yeah. yeah. Car and home sales are climbing. Families are dining out more often. Gee, where are they getting all the money? And the retail sector added jobs last month. Really? Which means people are shopping. Yeah, because they're hiring for the Christmas season. <laughs> That's why, that's why the, the jobs are up. Will the financial health of the country improve sooner? It's a temp job. Rather than yeah. later? For the first time in a long time, that question doesn't seem ridiculously out of place. But even when the economy finally accelerates, many people will be left behind. Casualties of a pounding recession and a lackadaisical recovery. In parts of New Jersey, the picture is especially bleak. Judging from a report just published by the Poverty Research Institute, an arm of legal services of New Jersey. Oh, the right wing is going to call that bias. Aren't they? Yeah. Oh, and if you're because they'd like to do away with legal services, wouldn't they? Yeah. And by the way, if you're if you're poor and homeless and you in in North Carolina, you you're a criminal. They arrest you. That's correct. You're you're considered South what, Carolina. What? That South Carolina South would Carolina. that considered a vagrancy? Vagrant? Yeah. They want you out of the city at night. Get out. How are they supposed to get out? They don't care. If they have no money for transportation, and where do they go? They, they don't care. They don't care. In other words, they, they don't want the tourists to see they're, you. They're, they're treating the homeless in South Carolina like litter. They're criminalizing them. Well, at least they'll give them a place to sleep. No, they won't. They want them out of the city. No, when they arrest... Let them be someone else's problem. Yeah, but when they... When they arrest them for vagrants, they automatically have shelter in, in, in a hot meal. Maybe. But they want me, before they arrest you, they probably want to kick you the hell out. Where the hell are you going to go? Go to the next town, county, whatever. <sighs> oh, they have simple solutions, don't they? Yes, they do. One quarter of the state's residents, that's 25%, it's what Billy touched on, have a hard time paying for housing, food, and medical care, according to the annual survey. Sure, look at the cost of housing and medical care. Look at the cost of rents. It's, 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 In New Jersey, it's insane. Bergen County, come on. It's insane. Even, even my friend uh, Kenny down in Boca Raton, Florida, uh. he showed me, uh, he showed me uh, 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 apartments, apartments for rent, and uh, in that county, um, Boca Raton, I don't know if it's Broward County, I think it's, uh, uh, what's it, Palm Beach County, or, it, it's, it's, don't ask me, it's north, never been in Florida, well, Boca Raton is, is north of Fort Lauderdale, it might be in the next county, might, might be closer to West Palm Beach, up that way, but anyway, uh, nice towns, with no, with very low crime, uh, the rents are, are very similar, if not more expensive than up here. And I said to him, well, what the hell do they people do for money down there? I mean, all you really have is are retail jobs and they, that pay minimum wage. And he told me a lot of young people have moved to Florida and there's uh, a lot of professionals, younger professionals that are working in Florida. So it's not just about tourism and retail anymore. And retired people. 
but but still the the cost of living versus the the pay wow. in Florida is totally out of balance. I mean, yeah, I mean if your rent is like sixteen hundred dollars for a one bedroom apartment in Florida, what do you do for a living down there where you're going to make enough money to pay that rent and and then utilities and food and everything else? Alligator hunter. I mean, the nerve of the real estate business to charge that kind of rent in a state where the average income is chicken feed. That's what I'm trying to get at. Location, location, location. You got to get the ink. I mean, there's no sense of having beautiful apartments for rent if people can't rent them, if they're empty. Well, obviously they haven't hit that brick wall yet. Okay. People are finding the money. Somehow, some way. Yeah. yeah. Legal services measures poverty not by the federal rate, which puts a family of four below the poverty line when the household income is less than $23,550. But by 250% of that rate, or $58,875. Mm -hmm. The reason is that the high cost of living in this area eats up far more of a salary than it does in other parts of the country. Sure it does. Researchers believe a more realistic measure employs the higher rate. Passaic County has the unfortunate distinction of containing the most poverty in the state with 37% of residents considered poor using U.S. Census Bureau data of households earning 200% of the poverty level. Nearly 60% of the city of Passaic's households and more than half of Patterson's struggle to make the most basic ends meet. Bergen County measures better at 18 percent, but that still works out to nearly one in five people. Using the federal standard, the state's poverty rate hovers at 10.4 percent. It's far lower, but of little comfort because the last time it measured higher was in 1959. Hmm. Juxtapose these numbers with the fact that New Jersey's median household income ranks third in the country. As staff writer Dave Scheingold reports, and a disturbing picture emerges of just how deep the divide is between financially comfortable and financially strapped. A staggering 50,000 full-time workers earn less than the federal poverty rate in 2011. This is a good article. The report's authors point out the vital role played by food stamps and the earned income tax credit in keeping families afloat. They also mention the difficulty of analyzing the success of the state's anti-poverty strategy until New Jersey takes a more coordinated approach. Not with Christie there. No. Well, this this is what the uh, uh, middle class and, and poor families uh, can expect from any uh, of today's government help is just simply to stay afloat, to survive. Tread water. To tread water, to simply exist. Yeah. Now, forget about uh, the American dream or... Uh, you know, or being living a happy, fulfilled life. <laughs> the high poverty numbers are a stark reminder that the state has to do a better job of streamlining anti-poverty efforts. They have to do a job, period. <laughs> Too many people in desperate straits have to parse the rules of too many agencies to get the help they need. From the other end, the state would do better by tackling poverty as a whole. From housing to after-school care, 
job training to community development. For now, we are left to contend with disheartening data on just how difficult it is to make ends meet in an expensive state like New Jersey. Well, New Jersey is the most, it's still the most densely populated state in the nation and uh, uh, I, I believe it has something to do with so many major cities are surrounding New Jersey and, and are in New Jersey. You know, you have Philadelphia uh, in the southwestern part of the state, you have New York City in the northeastern part of the state, then within the state you have Newark and um, it's very congested, it's very congested, there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of industry. Um, so when they got that, when they got that nickname, the Garden State, I don't know. That must have been the New Jersey of the distant past. E even though there there is still plenty of farms left, but not like it used to be. But anyway. Hey, in the country as a whole, it's only one percent of people that are farmers today. Yeah, the family used farm. To be, I think it was eighty percent. People were once connected to the land. Today it's all corporate agribusiness. They're the ones that make the big bucks, baby. Agribusiness. Yeah, th those are the, the ones. Wholesalers. That, those are the ones that are in bed with Monsanto and the genetically modified seeds, right? Those too. Agribusiness. Fat cat farms. And uh, they go and sue the little guy and put him out of business. Yeah. The, so uh, you have to buy Monsanto seeds. Americans used to rely on the on the backbones of the country which was uh, Main Street, small stores, mom and pop stores, entrepreneurs, ma uh, Main Street and local privately owned or family owned organic farms. Eat local. Eat local. Eat local. Everything local. Fre you had fresh produce and fresh dairy. Everything was local. It was clean. Good food. And um, because you know, if you if you consume anything that comes from far away, it's most li likely going to be loaded with preservatives and various chemicals. And, and if uh, it's from another country, it's loaded with DDT. Yeah, irradiation, irradiated. Oh. Um, you know, tomatoes are picked green instead of being vine ripened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, that's why my no wonder why my uh, my cayenne peppers are so damn hot because they're vine ripened and they're organic so I mean I know cayenne is not supposed to be hot like habanero but man mine are super hot so uh, I think that has a lot to do with it the, the, the point is vine ripened local organic food is the most nutritious and the healthiest to eat period Non an heirloom, not non-GMO. Is there there's some kind of a, uh, a proposition coming up in the state of Washington for uh, uh, labeling GMO labeling? There's uh, oh every state is. Um, I think the uh, California just went through something like that. I think they lost. They lost to GMO <coughs> labeling. I think Too so. bad because California is like the true garden state of the. Uh, of the nation. Well, it is doing a lot better now under Jerry Brown than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, Brown. Who drove the state into the ditch. Jerry Brown made a comeback? Yeah. Oh, wow. Good and for him. guess what he did? Good for him, what? Oh, they raised the minimum wage. They put a tax on the rich. Hey, that's how you get out of your deficits, don't you? Jerry Brown is kind of like um, a political. Ralph Nader. Oh yeah, right? but they ad hominem attacked him in the old days, calling him Mr. Moonbeam. Hey, Moonbeam, Moon Craters, whatever you want to, however you want to shake it. If you're doing your job for the little guy and for mainstream masses, that that's all right in my book. <laughs> You know, but it ain't all right in the book of the big corporation. Oh, dude. I feel my heart bleeds for them. Uh. Oh, my heart bleeds for the uh, for the rich having to actually pay taxes and then their fair share. You know, I feel so sorry for them. Um, well, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, 
I don't pity no. State no, I don't. That's what I said. I, I know you're speaking sarcastically. Yeah. But my point is, we got people in this country who shed tears for for billionaires. Yeah, because they they pay attention to Fox News too much. They believe the the propaganda and the bullshit and the lies. Is there uh, is there one really hard hitting article in front of you, or we'll just call it a day? Might as well call it a day because this has to do with the spying again. NSA spying? Yeah. Miss mm. uh, El, El Presidente of uh, of, uh, of Brazil uh, didn't like it too much that she got spied on by the you know, United States. Really? Is yeah. it a, is it a long article? No. What the hell? Make it the last one. The Brazilian government condemned a United States spy program that reportedly targeted the nation's leader. Labeled it an unacceptable invasion of sovereignty and called Monday for international regulations to protect citizens and governments alike from cyber espionage. Hmm. In a sign that fallout over the spy program is spreading, the newspaper Falha de Sao Paulo mm -hmm. reported that President Dilma Rousseff, Rousseff is considering canceling her October trip to the United States. I don't blame them. Where she has been scheduled to be honored with a state dinner. Falha cited unidentified Rousseff aides the president's office declined to comment. The foreign ministry called in U.S. Ambassador Thomas Shannon and told him, Brazil expects the White House to provide a prompt written explanation over the espionage allegations. The action came after a report aired Sunday night on Global TV citing 2012 documents from the National Security Agency leaker Edward Snowden that indicated that the United States intercepted Rousseff's emails and telephone calls along with those of Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto whose communications were being monitored even before he was elected as president in July 2012. Now, if we believe the government, the NSA agency spying is to catch terrorists. What the F does Brazil's president and Mexico's president have to do with terrorism? Unless they're secretly, uh, no, don't make an excuse for the NSA. Cooperate. They're just spying to spy. In other words, they're using the so-called uh, um, terrorism um, as an excuse, thing, as a catch-all thing. The so-called Al Qaeda thing as an excuse to spy on everybody for everything. That's right. Every possible. Uh, That's right. Uh, just for the sake of spying. That's being nosy. right. That's right. Well, some some conspiracy theorists, uh, you know, like some of the Alex Jones people and Jesse Ventura people believe that there's <laughs> technically no real Al Qaeda. Well, then, That's it's supposed to have been decimated, but what has happened is that uh, they, uh, new cells have sprung up, like in in uh, 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 Syria. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a video out showing one of the commanding officers uh, in Syria having killed a Syrian soldier and he cuts out his liver and his heart and he eats them. You want to put money behind these kind of people? Nope. No. Well, that's what they're dealing with over there. You got Assad, the dictator, and you got these uh, liver and heart eaters. Yeah, but the less the lesser of the two evils, they're both evil. Yeah. I just feel bad for the uh, children uh, dying of poison gas. Yeah. That's what I feel bad about. But we have such a thing called it's in New York too. It's a big building. 
called the United Nations. Yeah, wh where are they in all this? And since 192 or 191 nations have signed the chemical uh, 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 treaty, you shouldn't use them, uh, why don't they put together, whatever happened to those UN forces that used to go here, there, and everywhere with the white, with the white trucks and, and the white cars and everything? Where are they? Where are they? Send them over there! They're called peacekeepers. Well, put them over there and keep the peace. Yeah. It's not happening. Put them over in uh, Lebanon and, uh, and, 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 and with the Palestinians and the, uh, the Israelis. Put them over there. Yeah. A, a international force. International force. I mean, they've never let the UN run the way it was supposed to. No. You know? The Security Council. Yeah. How far are you in? I'm almost done. Oh, go ahead. Earlier, Senator Ricardo Ferraccio, head of the Brazilian Senate's Foreign Relations Committee, said lawmakers already had decided to formally investigate the United <laughs> States programs focus on Brazil because of earlier revelations that the country was a top target of the NSA spying in the region. He said the probe would likely start this week. I feel a mixture of amazement and indignation. It seems like there are no limits when the phone of the president of the Republic is monitored. It's hard to imagine what else might be happening, Ferraco, Ferraccio said, in Brasilia. It's unacceptable that in a country like ours, where there is absolutely no climate of terrorism, mm -hmm. that there is this type of spy. Huh. Well, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, Bible prophecy is becoming a reality. We're in the end times, and uh, things can only get worse, uh, as opposed to... You Matthew know, what, 24. What Billy Morrow says, that you know, he hopes everything gets better and uh, people see the light, but the thing is, the people that are causing the atrocities and the corruption and the evil, they know what they're doing. You know, in order for in order for somebody to wake up and see the light, that means that they are unclear about what's really going on, and they're not they're not aware of what's really going on. But but these people are aware of what's going on. But they have too much power to change. And and apparently they just care about profit, and they don't care about anything else. That's correct. You know, and. Uh, well, the prophets before people. Prophets before uh, people and the planet and the environment. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the dog barking, you would you would think that a dog would be used to seeing people walking around walking around by now and stop barking and get tired. But it's almost like you know they just keep on going on and on. But for what? The what dog is young. It's uh, probably four or five months old. Maybe that's it. That's it. Anyway, well, he should be learning. Well, quite, well, nobody you know, in this stupid neighborhood is teaching them anything. Parents ain't teaching. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got a feral cat problem because people are not taking responsibility for their pets, spaying, neutering, shots, and what have you. You know. Uh, anyway, this is our product. We've been selling it from the uh, Mega Life Twenty One uh, Progressive. Uh, Internet talk radio station. It is uh, from mainland China. Two of the most time proven uh, tonics, health tonics known to man. Uh, red Panax ginseng with royal jelly. Uh, one month supply, 30 liquid vials. Just go to newslettercensor.com and at the top of the page, click on the radio station link. And at the bottom, you will see the PayPal uh, logo and you can order it. All right, red Panax ginseng with royal jelly. It comes in this beautiful red and gold box from mainland China. Cool. Thank you for joining us for Progressive 
discussions. We'll see you next time. And say goodbye to Dr. Bones, Bones McCoy. Because, yes, yes, Halloweeny is in the air. Isn't that so, Dr. Bill? Actually, it's a month and a half away. Well, I, I kind of like it, so I got a head start on Halloweeny. Good God. Halloween.